evening campers, you know what time it is. It's the Bucker prediction. Oh, I'm so pumped. I've never, I've never done this before. Never done it. I've never put, you know, my cards on the table. But I guarantee you, if you're watching this right now, 60% success rate. I guarantee <laughs> myself a 60% success rate that these books, 60% of them, will be on the Booker 2020 long list. Let's go! Just in case the booktuber bar and bookcase is watching, this is a double dry hopped, double IPA. I know he likes that. I'm giving him a shout out. Go over and check him out. Get over there. <laughs> I'm so excited. Come over here. Now, most people will start giving suggestions out to you lovely people, but not this boy. Some people would say this is a bit excessive, but I've gone through every single rule for eligibility in regards to the Booker Prize. I am going to paraphrase these rules, but really you only have to focus on three things when it comes to is a book eligible. Working from the top down, point A, B and C basically say that as long as a body of work is published in the UK or Ireland, written between the 1st of October 2019 to the 30th of September 2020, it is eligible. The second rule, and the always the hardest to preempt, is covered in 1D, which is that if a work has been published outside the UK and Ireland, it will only be eligible if the original date of publication outside the UK and Ireland is within the previous two years. So they cannot be anything earlier than the 1st of October 2017. Again, it's the most difficult, but you always have to consider it. The third rule which ticks off E to K is that this work must be produced by a living author in English. No translated works can be eligible. That's why they created the International Booker Prize, which is currently going to be announcing a winner very soon. If you're interested in the book or just want to learn more, this document is really, really useful. And again, I will link it down below. But enough of all the bloody crap. The long list normally consists of 12 books or the Booker dozen 13 fantastic pieces of literature that showcase the best that the English language has to offer. And I'm going to go for 13. I think there's going to be 13 books in this long list, not 12. Publishers are limited on the number of books that they can put forward to Booker for judging, depending on how many books they've had in their catalogue that's ever been long listed. This changes if a previous Booker winner publishes a book that year. They basically get automatic entry to be judged. And this year, there's four. And I personally think all four will make it through to the long list. My first prediction is The Mirror and the Light by Hilary Mantel. It's the people's favourite to win and also the bookies favourite to win. There is a lot of hype around this book and out of the predictions it's actually the only one I've read and the hype lives up to it. This story is about the final moments of Thomas Cromwell the right hand to King Henry VIII, and we see him rise to power and fall completely, thrown to the hounds, deceived by his friend, and the power ebbing through his body. If Hilary Mantel wins, she will be the only person to be the thrice winner of the Booker, not the first, not the twice, the thrice but there's someone else who could take that from her. My second prediction is again someone who has won the Booker twice, but also he has the heft of that Nobel Prize. It's J.M. Kutzea with his Death of Jesus book, the last and final book in his bizarre allegorical tale of a boy called David who grows up. Though the previous two books, The Childhood of Jesus and The School Days of Jesus, haven't won, Booker is known to give parts of series awards. If you look at The Ghost Road, the last in a trilogy of Pat Barker's Regeneration series, 
and recently I've read Paul Scott Staying On, which is a spin-off to the Raj Quartet. I think out of all the books that I'm predicting, I think Kutzea is probably going to be the person who has enough clout to take that from Mantel without making it too controversial. Kutzea is a genius and his prose is fantastic. And I think out of all my predictions, he is truly the only one who would be able to take that crown from Mantel and not be controversial. Would be controversial because the mirror of the light is bloody fantastic. My third prediction won the prize last in 2008 with the White Tiger. Yes, is Aravind Adiga's Amnesty, which follows Danny, a Sri Lankan illegal immigrant who is trying to better his life. I've not read any of Adiga's work, but people who have read White Tiger ferociously enjoyed it. And this book in particular, I feel as though it's had a marketing Push, it's really been in my face, this one. Adiga won in 2008, but the year previous, Anne Enright won in 2007 with The Gathering, and she's brought out Actress, a fictional take of childhood and motherhood growing up in Hollywood and how the stage and reality really have a dichotomy with each other. This book is currently on the Women's Prize for Literature in Britain, and the Women's Prize and the Booker Prize always seem to take from one another. Therefore, I think if The Mirror and the Light's going to be on there, Enright has to be as well. I've tried that way too quick. Oh, it's 8%. Oh, gosh, darn it. I thought I was taking more takes than usual. Four previous winners, let's talk about the next nine. And I really, really hope this is on there because I've heard so much. It's just an excuse to go out and read it. And it's the debut novel, Rainbow Milk. And this just sounds so good. It's in the Observer's like top 20 books already. And everyone has just swooned. It's about a young, gay, black Jehovah's Witness growing up in Wolverhampton and already a premise to probably explore dark, real issues. And again, that's something that the booker wants. My sixth prediction comes from David Mitchell. Yes, the author of Cloud Atlas, Bone Clocks. One of my favourite novels, Number Nine Dream. It's been long awaited for him to drop a new novel and he's done it, Utopia Avenue, about a British rock band in the 1960s exploring psychedelics, drugs and everything to do with that era. Personally, I will be so, so, so upset if he is not on this list because David Mitchell writes bangers. The seventh prediction, and I wish I had more booze to say this, is Ali Smith's Summer. I know, I know, I know. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Again, it's the last in her seasonal quartet. Ali Smith does so well with prizes that, again, I would actually be surprised if she's not chosen. But heralded from Autumn, the first book in his quartet, which was marketed as the first Brexit novel. Summer is going to be that closing chapter. And though, as much as I say I don't like Smith, she very much writes in the now. And it's very topical at the moment, I find her works. Therefore, what she's going to be talking about now, possibly with Brexit finally, possibly, maybe never, coming together with all the angst and the turmoil that's coming with politics it's going to be a very much now novel ali smith i know we don't see eye to eye but i would be very pleased to see you on this long list oh my god what have i become <laughs> it's the eight percent beers begin don't kid yourself kieran she's she's gonna be on this long list she's going to be on the long list swiftly moving on we have jeet thayel's book Low. Now, Jeet was shortlisted in 2012 for Narcopolis, and it did really well, had a very good perception. 
and that was talking about a opium den in Bombay and this new book he's come out with oh my god does this sound crazy oh this would actually be a really good comparing with Utopia Avenue and Low but it's like drug culture yeah yes Kieran my next prediction is Jack by Marilyn Robinson winner of the Pulitzer Prize for Gilead and we go in back to Gilead in this story looking at one prodigal son jack i actually don't know much about this and it's not one i'm overly confident with if i be honest but she's such a big name in literature that surely she has to have been considered and another book i'm not too optimistic about is jenny offill's weather but again it was long listed for the women's prize People seem to like Jenny Offill. I, I, I'm never drawn. I'm never drawn to her works. Weather doesn't really sound interesting to me. Her previous work, Department of Speculation. Uh, yeah. It's not what I'm keen on, but it was like the New York Times, like instant bestseller. It's doing well. So I wouldn't be surprised. I just don't want to read it because it sounds quite boring to me. <coughs> what I am extremely keen on is a Quakey Azemi's new novel, The Death of Vivek OG. This sounds right up my street. The novel chronicles Vivek's life when he's born and his grandmother dies all the way up to his impending death. I generally really love those books. I don't know if it's going to be like slow and meditative, but I really hope they've done their best. I really hope they've just done their best work because it sounds really good. My last two, look, I'll be honest, I'm not completely confident in any way, shape or form they're going to go on this, but I would love to see them on this. The first one I want to talk about is Rodder by Curtis Sittenfeld which is about a fictional telling of if Hillary Clinton never met Bill. And I just think tackling this subject while Hillary's still alive, while Bill's still alive with American politics, very much ferocious. I, I don't know how this person... I, <laughs> <laughs> I want it on there. I want it on there so badly. I don't. I really don't think it's going to, but I would love it if it was. I chose this over Hamnet. My last prediction is that there is going to be a graphic novel on this long list. Now, Sabrina was the first ever graphic novel on a long list by Nick Grasso. And I think I was in 2018 along with, yeah, it was with Milkman. And it was a big, like, a, a huge, like, whoa, like, you, you can do that? And we haven't done it since. I think now is the time because some of the graphic novels that are coming out are fantastic. And the one that I really, really want on there is Year of the Rabbit by Tien Vaesner. This graphic novel really looks at the heart and heartlessness of dictatorship, of totalitarianism, of inhumanity, power, and what it means to live in a world that wants you dead, striking, heart-wrenching, breath taking somber melancholic but highlighting the dark it's something that we always need to be aware of we can't hide away from something because it's not in our own country we need it at the forefront to understand to reflect to embrace almost the horror in order to understand how to truly move on. 
13 books predicted and a 60% success rate. Guaranteed, I didn't get the nickname Booker Boy for nothing. No one's ever called me that. But your Booker Boy will be here on the 28th, going through all that juicy long list because you all voted. I am going to review each and every one with an in depth, energetic, original take. As I'll get 40. <laughs> As I'll get 40% wrong, what books do you think I've missed? What books do you think deserve a place on that long list? Please do let me know in the comments. I look forward to everyone proving me wrong. I will see you very soon. There's really three things we need to con there's, there's really three things we need to consider when it comes to the eligibility of the Booker Prize. And that is number one. <laughs>